Cinemalaya season has come and gone, and I'm happy to announce and proud to announce that I was given an invitation to watch the short film groups A and B at the cultural center of the Philippines by none other than my friends Yara and Mo. I paid for my own ticket. So I figured, what the heck? It's been a while since us filthy casuals have kicked back and talked movies, so welcome to the, to, to the, to the something something movies talks about Cinemalaya short films, even though the festival is already done video. Well, I will be giving my quick opinions on each short film. This is by no measure a legitimate criticism or review. I'm not a professional. I've taken like barely a year's worth of film school. I just like movies and I like talking about them. So let's get started. First up, we have Si Astri Makasitambula by Sef Suarez. Right off the bat, you're shown the importance of these festivals and how they can showcase stories that are rich with culture and have much needed representation, stories that need to be told. In this case, it's the love story of Astri and Tambula, two young lovebirds in Zamboanga whose unorthodox pairing causes some complications in their otherwise traditional Bajau lives. Unorthodox to their community anyway, as Astri is a trans woman and Tambula is a cis man. But I think what makes this short so special is how these characters struggle to be with one another while still respecting their culture's traditions. To me, their conservative traditions are never portrayed as an evil that they have to defeat, but more like an obstacle that they must find a way to work with instead of against. Up next, we have Joe Delerx de la Cruz, Employee of the Month, directed by Carlo Francisco Manatad. Being one of the shorter short films in both groups doesn't mean jack shit. Joe Delerx de la Cruz, Employee of the Month, packs so much tension, build up, and release in its 13 minute runtime that you end up becoming sympathetic to the protagonist's plight, who after being a model employee of this now soon to shut down gas station, now decides to help pull the rug from under and rides the crash down as she and her coworker experience this archaic night of simply not giving a fuck anymore. Up next, we have Logro by Kenny Villaflor. One of my personal favorites from shorts A and B, Logro succeeds in two very important ways. So let's list those down right now. One. Armand Castro, the lead actor, does a phenomenal job of portraying Bruno, a man with dwarfism who decided that he's had enough of choosing between underpaid work or work that exploits his dwarfism for other people's ridicule and other people's enjoyment. So he decides to join an underground fight club. Two, as a result of one, the writing paired with Castro's performance does what every story, no matter what medium, should do, first of all, make you give a shit about the protagonist. You root for Bruno from the very start all the way till the very last frame of the film, and if a film can do that, then it's done its goddamn job. And Logro has done its goddamn job. Up next, Sasayang, Sasayang Isla. Fuck. Up next, Sasayang Isla, Isla. Fuck. Up next, Sasayang Isla, directed by Christian Candelaria. My pick for best of the bunch for both shorts A and B has to go to Sasayang Isla just because of how refreshingly pure the story is. A majority of short films from both groups have this overarching darkness to their story or how their stories progress. So to have one that is as simple as a little boy discovering that one day he just wants nothing more than to be a mermaid is both a visual and emotional breath of fresh air. Smells like the sea and wholesome memes. And finally, we have Nangungupahan by Glenn Barit. 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 Visually the most adventurous of Group A, Nangungupahan is a film viewed entirely from one static point of view. We're taken through the lifespan of a house from a fixed perspective, different points in time through small cuts on the screen, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle being switched out. It's pieces being switched out with different people and stories, different points in time. Entertaining, very nostalgia inducing, but I was too confused trying to make sense of everything to enjoy it, which was probably my mistake. Looking back now, Nangungupahan probably was meant to be viewed more as a living time machine picture frame as opposed to a uh, one linear story. We hope you enjoyed this quick overview of a lot of the shorts from Shorts A of Cinemalaya. Had a great time nevertheless, and it's just always a great time supporting local cinema. Happening this weekend actually is Pistanang Pilikulang Pilipino, which has a lot of movies that I'm hoping to check out over the weekend, and hopefully we get to do some movie quickies on some of them. So till then, please keep watching movies, keep supporting the local scene, and we'll see you next time, you filthy casuals.